Welcome back to You Met Her Yet. Today I'm with Meredith, who is the owner of Havana Co-working Collective. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Lindsay. It's my pleasure. So before we get started with a few things, I would love it if you can tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, what do you do, and um, how did you get to where you are currently today in your career? Sure. So um, I am the owner and founder of Havana Coworking Collective. Uh, we are, um, well, we originally, we started as a shared office space and we also offered supportive programming to women entrepreneurs. So that was in the form of um, in-person workshops, seminars, um, masterminds. We have obviously since um, there's been the turn of events and, and we're being asked to stay at home currently, uh, we've moved everything online. So now we're sort of an online platform for women entrepreneurs to connect with one another and learn and enhance their skills through our online workshop seminars and masterminds. Um, we've been open for just shy of two years, so we've been working on it for about three, three and a half years, and then we've officially been open for just under two years now. Prior to this, I was Director of Business Development for an import and distribution company, and I worked in renewable energy, so our product was solar panels and solar-powered products, so if you can... What that would most people are familiar with are like those little solar powered garden lights. So we did oh, right, everything right. like, yeah, like those little, the ones you just push into the garden. Um, so we did everything like those little garden lights as well, all the way up to big sort of lamp posts, kind of like those um, lamp posts are sort of like that English, old English style, um, as well as just solar panels for powering things like RVs and um, camping items and things like that. Um, and that was probably over a decade of my life was in that industry across two businesses. Um, and the second business um, was really where I learned most of my business experience and, and really got to dig in and see what business ownership was like. I didn't actually own the business, but I worked very closely with the business owner and was sort of the second in command. And so got a really good exposure to all different aspects of that business and had some really good experiences. I was able to open an office here in Vancouver. Um, although the business wasn't based here, I was able to open an office here. So it was sort of my office under my um, direction and did all of the hiring across, uh, it was about five or six years. Um, all of the training, developing out that office in our processes. And eventually we ended up closing the office and moving everything down into Southern America. But um, it was a really great experience. And that's sort of what led me to being ready to open my own business. Very, very cool. Um, where do you think the idea or sort of um, the... Uh, the push for you to want to open something like a co-working space? Where did kind of that brainchild idea come from? Yeah, so at the end of that last business, so I knew that I was sort of outgrowing my role there. Um, there were some, some aspects of that role that I wasn't in love with anymore. Um, I had grown as a person and sort of grown apart from the ethos of that company and how they chose to run their business and, and make decisions. So it was just a natural growing apart. And so I started looking for what my next thing would be. And I started looking at buying a business because I, as I had had that opportunity to kind of see into the different areas of running a business, I thought, you know, it was kind of like the time for the training wheels to come off and do it on my own, do it for myself. And so I started looking around, started looking at buying a business, um, but nothing really piqued my interest. Um, at the same time, you know, I'd had about six years of managing the office here in Vancouver. I had a fair amount of turnover. I'd really kind of honed my own leadership skills, honed my hiring processes, felt really good about how I was able to 
manage people and bring new people on, get them on board, and had built out an office that I really loved. Our team was really fantastic. And it kind of just so happened that I ended up with an all woman team. Okay. And it it was just the best team, like group, cohesive group I'd had across those five years or six years. Mm -hmm. And I just really loved it. Around the same time, by sheer coincidence, I just came across a news article about the wing in Manhattan. And when I saw that, I love the model. And it also put into focus a few of the things that I had experienced, but really wasn't able to put my finger on as far as um, doing business as a woman, as being a woman who is at a high level in a business um, and doing some of the negotiations and deal making and representing the business at different stages and for different functions. And it, it gave me the language and put it the focus um, to things that I hadn't been able to express. So why I felt sometimes dismissed or de de demeaned right. in certain situations. And it kind of really sparked a fire in me at that point to really investigate what that was and what that means to me. And instead of just, you know, being angry about it, going further and looking at, you know, does it have to be that way? Why is it that way? How do I create an environment where I don't have those barriers that I'm not experiencing those things any longer? And so a culmination of those three things. So having that all female team that just worked so well together, mm -hmm. um, looking and being ready to buy a business, and then also finding this model and understanding that these are these are real things that are happening. It's not just my imagination that sometimes I'm not taking seriously for no apparent reason. So those three things coming together really um, just by, by luck sparked this idea to, to do this in Vancouver. Very cool. It's, it's really interesting to hear the reasons why you created this. I mean, a lot of it came from your own experience, positive or negative, but it came from something that either was missing or you saw wasn't working somewhere else and you wanted to better it and make it something that, you know, had worked for you and can continue to work for yourself, but other people as well, specifically females, which I think is a really, really incredible thing. Um, I've been a member now, I think, just over a year. I think it was last spring I had initially signed up for it. And um, I myself ha have had struggles in corporate life of, of um, being dismissed or um, just different different things with, with um, maybe corporate leaders, et cetera. And so I've found having a space where you're connecting and collaborating with other females, it's truly incredible to see what we can create and how we support each other and just how different it is as opposed to mm -hmm. other sort of environments. Um, so with that being said, with all of your ideas of what you wanted to create, I mean, you said now it's three years later of the idea and two years of the business. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. looking back now, like how, like, is this how you imagined it would be? Is it better? Like, is it something that you think it would be, it's going to continue, it's going to continue to evolve? Like looking back on it now, it's how, how does it look from what your initial vision was? I mean, it's, it's amazing. It is better than I ever imagined. It's different for sure. Um, there are some things that I wasn't expecting and then others that have turned out exactly as I thought they would. Um, you know, I was able to bring to life my vision of what our physical office was going to look like. Mm -hmm. And that was really fun to do. Um, and then the community itself evolved and it continues to evolve and it over delivers, um, you know, it's more than I ever thought it would be. So it's really amazing. And in, in that way, and then of course, you know, recent events, it, it rapidly changed again. And so I never thought I was necessarily going to move completely online. It was kind of in the pipeline, I thought, okay, well, we'll do an online version of this somewhere 
down the road. Um, let's, you know, I wanted to really see what we could build here in this one space. It felt very controllable. It felt um, achievable, you know, one node. And then all of a sudden it was just time to go online. So <laughs> went online and now we're not location dependent and it's an amazing, wonderful thing and also scary. So in the last week I had to um, figure out how I take global payments, um, which sounds like it should be pretty easy, just accept <laughs> global payments, but there's a whole series of technology and, and um, tax implications and, and things that you have to research and, and find out. And so I did that last week. And Wow. So meaning you're bringing someone else into the community that is not from Vancouver or not location in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's great. Something I'm sure you never in your wildest dreams thought it would be something that you would be doing at this point in time. I mean, having a physical location to bring people, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, it just forced, it forces you to, there's things that happen. It doesn't have to be this big scale, right? There's yes. always things that happen that force you to, to look at something you never looked at before. And yeah. so, you know, the path that I kind of laid out in my mind of what that was going to look like was, well, let's become a success with this here, what I have right now. And then maybe then we look at another city or another location or another neighborhood, that sort of thing that looked like the traditional path and that other people had seen success in. And that seemed like the, the most accepted course of action seems like a great plan. And then, you know, things change and you find a new plan yeah. and do your best to make it work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that Hervana was one of the first businesses that I've been connected to or had noticed very early on in all of this um, adapt really well to kind of just shifting everything online, which I give you so much credit for. It's It is extremely hard, first of all, to do, but also to have that motivation. Um, so what would you say was sort of your motivation or your point when you were like, this is what's going to happen? Was it from um, internal motivation? Were there people in the community that were kind of being like, hey, let's do things online? Like where can you maybe talk about like how that happened a few weeks ago? Yeah. So the idea of hosting things online had always existed. We had always had a couple people who had said, the timing's not right, or I don't live in the city, right. but I'd love to participate. Could we do this online? And a lot of why I built the business was that I have a belief that, you know, there's magic that happens in person. Yeah. And so I'd always pushed back against offering it online. I wanted people to show up in person yeah. and have the casual, um, ca casual encounters, the, the opportunities, sorry, it's a weird phrase, um, <laughs> but the opportunities to meet people that just happen by chance yeah, and see what comes up when those chance meetings. Um, I think that you can build a deeper relationship by, by meeting in person without intentionally trying. I think you can still build very deep relationships virtually, but I think you have to really be intent on, on making those connections um, in order to take it to those deeper levels. So I right. had always pushed back on that. So the idea of going online had always been sort of in the background and I had hummed and hawed with it a little bit. You know, there are people who want to participate, so maybe I should make it more widely available. And for me, I was always going to continue hosting an in-person version and the tech and logistics around trying to do both was a little bit difficult for me. Mm -hmm. So managing like, as far as just like logistically having a speaker here in the office and, uh, you know, 20 women in the audience listening and then also being able to at adequately video and get sound on them. Right. It was really a logistics issue for me. And that was kind of my excuse to be like, nope, we're not going to do it. Yep. So when we were forced to, and it was kind of an idea of like, well, we do nothing or we do this online. It was kind of one of those, it was, it was pretty natural. Like, okay, well, we're going to have to do it online because nobody can come in and, and we still 
have all this information that we want to share. I had, I basically have until the end of the year planned out right, um, as far right. as speakers. And I had people and, you know, I put a lot of effort into that planning and it, you know, it was a little bit hard to let go of, to just say, I don't think we're going to do it when there's a kind of a very clear answer that had existed that we just hadn't taken advantage of yet. So luckily for me, that solution was already in play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was already a desire for it. So I was able to feed that desire and everybody else just adapted really, really well. I had great, a great response from, from our community that yes, they would still show up even if it was online. Yeah. That is, is so cool. And it's truly going to be interesting to see in the future, near or far, whenever that's going to be, when uh, um, in-person events do happen, um, you know, is it going to be this craving of everyone wanting to be in person again? Is the online still going to be something that's going to be there? Um, now that you know that it works, is it going to be something that you can just like integrate? No problem. So it will be interesting to see kind of how things come in the future for that. It will. It's, it's something I think about a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So currently what you've pivoted online, um, now that you're a global community, um, we do have listeners who are from other provinces of Canada, some even international. Um, what are the things that you're currently offering that anyone can now join? Mm -hmm. So the way that we pivoted to allow a 100% online membership, we added a few things. We took things that we were already doing and then added a couple of things that seemed topical at the moment. So for the things that we were already doing, we had a once a month breakfast club. It's called Her Chats at Havana. And that was the first event that we took online, just timing wise. Um, I think the, the same week that we got the stay at home mandate, um, that came sort of came in on a Monday. That Wednesday, we had that breakfast meeting planned. So I'd already had people who had purchased tickets, who had signed up, that were intent on showing up. And so I felt compelled and I felt the responsibility to deliver on that. So we immediately took that one online. Now, we already had a a series called Let's Do Lunch that we used to offer in person. Yeah. And so then that was the next one. We just put took that, took it online, and then that went online as well. Um, based on the, the reaction that we were having that, you know, that we had had in the weeks prior, people were really feeling the need to express some of their concerns and talk about what was going on and doing it in a free way versus a webinar or just, you know, taking in information, they needed a place where they could voice their concerns right. and be heard. So I implemented a daily check-in. So every day, Monday to Friday at a set hour, I'm on Zoom and sometimes I'll have two people join me. Sometimes I have 12 people join me and we talk and we just kind of, it's an hour to, that's just kind of open. There's no formal it's not a webinar. It's not a formal discussion. It's a. It's just sort of open for whatever somebody needs. So, in the beginning, a lot of it was talk about the current situation. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of, you know, it's kind of sagged out a little bit. And I'm sure as things roll out, if you know we get more strict um, requirements or legislation that comes through, then that'll pop back up. But kind of right now, it's a little bit just sort of a how are we doing? This is something that is interesting that I found today, or, you know, this is a project I'm working on. And just a little bit of that normal chit chat. It's like seeing friends. Some people pop in for just 10 minutes, listen to the conversation and just see familiar faces that they haven't seen. And then they wave and they kind of go off and that's all they need. So it's, yeah. it's a low, um, commitment like there's low expectations nobody is expecting anybody to show up with a you know a, pre a fully pre like present um they don't need to be done up they don't need to have a presentation they don't you know you don't have to have to have a story to tell you can kind of yeah. just show up and say hi yeah um and I found that that was something that the community really needed so we do that and we do a couple other um variations of that like we do a wind down so every two weeks we have a happy hour which is 
mostly just positive good news at the end of the week, sort of, this is where we are, this is what's happening. Let's have a casual chat. Let's tell a few jokes. Um, we've had some, some of our members have just opened up and talked about uh, what their what their family history is. So it's kind of a get to know you mm -hmm. a little bit deeper as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a combination of online sessions that could be business related, skill building, and then opportunities to network and build connections and relationships. And so we officially we have about four to six of the skill building sessions each month. Um, basically I commit to scheduling four and then there's always like extra ones that I, I, I find and think, okay, we can squeeze it in. We can squeeze this in. So it ends up usually being about six. And then we have the, you know, five days a week an opportunity just to check in, to connect and network if you want. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I've loved, I think I've, I've gone to at least one of each of the things that you provide and yeah, it, each of them, it gives you a chance to you know, see a familiar face. I, I really enjoy the part where you can kind of either vent or just say what's going on. Um, I think for myself and a lot of other professionals out there who are at home, they're not really sure what other people in their industry are doing. They sometimes feel like they're either doing not enough or too much or whatever. So when you're connecting with other people, you're hearing what other people are doing. And hopefully in that connection, you're hearing someone else who you can relate to, right? Whether it's someone who is at the same level as you or they're just as clueless. It's just a, a good way to kind of feel um, like you're all kind of in the same boat. Um, I also mm -hmm. think the people that you're not in the same boat with, it also provides that little bit of like motivation of hearing someone else who is still doing okay, but you know, they're just giving you that little bit of nudge that maybe you needed to hear, um, which I think has been really, really cool that you've created that space for people to have. Yeah, it's interesting to see what shows up each day in the mm -hmm. conversation. I'm sure, um, I'm sure. Yeah, it's been really fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so interesting. And I mean, by, by this point in time, I, I assume most people have had tons of video chats and calls and et cetera. So it just seems like it's more of the norm. It's not um, as scary or intimidating anymore. It's just kind of one of the things that, that we're doing, I would say. Yes, yeah, it's it's interesting because, because we had a, a pretty close-knit community beforehand that we're used to meeting in person. When we went online in our first few sessions and still now, people would log in and their video would be on. And I find that to be unique to other webinars that I attend. So attend other webinars, networking, and everybody starts with their video off and it kind of takes some coaxing to get somebody to turn their video on. And, right, and right. so we had a group that was really willing and able to just be there video on and meet new people um, and do that you know, boldly without being timid and, and unsure about you know, or like kind of, I guess I would say like being one foot in, Yeah. you know, so I attend webinars and I did one today where it's just so easy to multitask. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, you, your video is off, you got your earphones in, and then you're also answering emails. And when something interesting comes yeah. up, you kind of like pop in. So what I found to be unique to the ones that I hold at Havana is that the interaction is very good. And we'll have a speaker and advise all the speakers who come through to, I tell them, you know, our group is quite, quite vocal there. They will ask questions. So make sure you pause quite a bit throughout your presentation to allow time for that because they like will pop in and just ask questions and everybody gets more out yeah. of the session because the questions are coming. And so it's a lively and really interactive session. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. How, that's changed. And it's funny, I'm even trying to like dial back memories of being on like massive webinars of people I've never met before. And I don't think I ever would think of turning on my camera. And it's, it's mm -hmm. so funny that now that you say that now that I think of things that I've been a part of in the last two weeks, it just seems natural. Like people are happy to show face whether they're in sweats or not. 
people just know everyone's at the same level, really. Um, so yeah, that is really interesting, that change mm -hmm. and that need for people or just want to, you know, see, see faces now, which is kind of cool and, and actually be fully into doing things and being present, I guess. Yeah, I think it's, it, it's increased our quality of, of online interactions. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so at the moment, it seems like a lot of people, well, I don't want to say a lot of people, but it seems like it's an opportunity for people to maybe start a business. And so when you started your business, what would you say was the best um, tool or resource that you use that helped kind of bring things off the ground? Yeah, you know, there was a number of things, they all kind of fit in the same category, but it really was connecting into communities. So um, I connected with Women's Enterprise Center mm -hmm. and they're, a, they're an organization that is in British Columbia and I think they also serve the Yukon mm -hmm. um, that does funding for women owned businesses, but they also do workshops, um, they have supportive programming, so they have a program for financial uh, literacy so that you can get used to business finances. Um, they run a number of programs like that, plus they have a um, webinar series that they run. And so getting in touch with them, they're very well connected within the province, they have a lot of resources to share, um, they have business advisors that you connect with, and then they sort of become a bit of your champion. Um, another organization I got in touch with right away was Forum for Women Entrepreneurs. Yep. So Forum for Women Entrepreneurs, um, if you're not familiar, they are a nonprofit or a charity. I can't remember the exact designation, but they do um, a gala, one, uh, one gala each year that they give away. I believe it's a bursary. It's called the Pitch for the Purse. So you, it's a pitching contest and they award uh, a financial purse. Oh, amazing. Mm -hmm. And so they also do a boot camp. So an entrepreneur is like three day boot camp uh, a couple times a year, I think. Cool. And so they were a really great organization to get in touch with. Again, lots of good resources. They're actually doing a really great job of providing resources um, currently. So they do some, I think one webinar, they've, they've run a couple webinars over the last month that have been really resource rich, really great information. Um, I got in touch with Van City Business Babes and started attending those events and just finding communities where I was going to have a good reception, you know, that there, there was some alignment in what I was doing. Yep. You would receive the business well, um, you know, whether or not they became customers and clients, they would be receptive to the business idea. Yep. Um, and it feels like it's just a soft place to land and you get a lot of support. Um, and then you also get people who are willing to talk about what you're doing. So if they like what you're doing, they're excited about what you're doing, they're gonna tell the other people in the community yeah. to spread awareness. Yeah. So by integrating into communities like those three, it really helped on a lot of fronts. Not only did it support me, um, cause I needed a lot of support at the beginning of my business and I still yeah. do, we all do. Um, but it also helped in marketing and it helped in um, market research and it helped me to, you know, figure out what may, what may, what may not work, get a little real person feedback on some of the ideas and thoughts that I was having. Um, yeah, so I would say that was sort of one thing that was just really crucial in being able to move forward. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that makes so much sense. Um, would you say that there is something that you wish someone had told you before you started a business? <laughs> That's a tough one. Cause you do get a lot of advice yeah. um, when you're starting a business and a lot of it is very well-meaning, well-intentioned, but not specific to you or your business. It's right. sort of a lot of it is a reflection on people's own experience. I think what I would have really, and I definitely was told this, I received this advice and didn't listen to it as well as I should have. So what I, if I could rephrase the question, if there was some advice that I wish I had listened to okay, yeah. <laughs> before, it would be that it, there's not a rush. Right. So I find that every new business owner, person who's thinking about launching a business has some kind of a time 
limit time deadline that they are working around. Yeah. And I would say that for the most part, it's a false deadline. It's a false timeline. Yeah. And so to just, if you can relieve that pressure Mm -hmm. and not, not be focused so much on time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is wonderful advice. Um, I constantly see that pressure from entrepreneurs who are starting their business or doing another phase of their business. I know when I started my business, I felt that pressure as well. You're working on a website and you're like, oh my God, it has to be done by tomorrow. Even if it's not perfect, like too bad, it has to be out. And that's just not something that you should rush. Um, especially with anything with branding or logos or business name or anything like that. I think a lot of the time people do have that pressure on themselves. They have this deadline that, like you said, it's, it's not really existent because, you know, you're going to create something. It's not going to maybe be what you wanted it to be. You're not going to feel as excited or passionate about it and it might fail or it might not you know, bring you that spark of joy every time you like promote your business or talk about your brand or whatever you're trying to do. So I think that that's really, really good advice to just lay out, lay off on the pressure, be kind to yourself through the process, especially for anyone who's starting a business right now. I don't think it's like time to put pressure on yourself to have like the most amazing next Airbnb or Twitter, whatever it's going to be of the pandemic, you know, like just Mm -hmm. really, really hone in on what exactly you want to sell, what exactly you want your business or your brand to be. And yeah, don't, don't kind of rush it. Right. Give yourself that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I found a lot of the deadlines also were sort of like, I can't do this until I have that. Right. It's also a version of that timeline. Um, So I can't, tell anybody I have a business till I have a website. I can't have a website till I have a logo (laughs) and I can't have a logo till I have a this. Yeah. You know, it ends up being a chicken and the egg and you can get really lost in that. And so I think, you know, if you have an idea for a business, start there, start telling people about your idea for the business, the name, the logo, the branding that can all happen. And, you know, if you get people along for the ride to kind of watch you do that, that's the beginning of your client base as well. Exactly. Yeah, I think I think that's that's such a nice way to put it too, is talking about it. I think talking about it is the best thing you can do, and then slowly things will come, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, um, in your career, have you ever had a mentor, or do you have a mentor, someone who you professionally look up to or you admire their career path? I mean, on my exact trajectory, no. But have I had a mentor? Yes, I've had yeah. I've had so many. Um, and you know, I I can if I look at it, I can think back. You know, I had mentors in high school. I had mentors throughout college. Well, I was a little bit of a I did I wasn't the best I wasn't the best college student. So <laughs> maybe not college. Um, I'm sure there was somebody. It's not coming to mind. But like when I was more focused on things, so I was quite focused in high school. And I was focused after college in my in my career, building my career at that time. I just took a little bit of a vacation, just got the education part done in college. But um, you know, there's been mentors all the way through, whether they're formal or informal. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a different thing. Um, and I think when we're young people are very happy to mentor us and, and that informal mentorship comes easily. And then as we get older, there's more complications around asking for help or having mm-hmm. people want to dedicate their time to a young adult or somebody in their mid twenties. You know, there's, there's some complications around there and how you navigate that relationship. Yeah. Um, Luckily, there's lots of great organizations that can pair you with mentors. So I've been paired formally with mentors um, numerous times. And then I found others just in life. And, you know, some of them know that they are my mentor and others don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting um, that as well. I, I think that I have mentors that people probably know and then other people who have no idea. And if maybe I have a conversation one day about 
you know, one day they help me do something. And it's, it's interesting. Um, I had a conversation with um, one of my girlfriends who was a guest on this podcast a few weeks ago, and I had told her, I gave her a little challenge to reach out to her mentor and say how much that they meant to them and how, how much their advice and lessons had kind of brought them to where they are today. And so, yeah, I always like to give that challenge to people is like, tell people that they've inspired you or that they've brought you to where you are, because sometimes people just go through life thinking, you know, maybe they haven't helped anyone or they haven't inspired anyone, but there's so many like silent things that have happened that they mm -hmm. might not realize. Yeah. And that's never a conversation that doesn't go well. It's yeah. always a conversation that's positive. Of course. Right? Of course. So yeah. Why absolutely. wouldn't you do that? It'd be nice. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. So I'm just going to change it up a little bit here. If you weren't doing what you were doing now, is there anything that you think that you would want to be doing or maybe trying out? Oh, <laughs> nobody's asked me that. <laughs> um, I have not really thought about that because, you know, this was something that just made so much sense when I, when I came on the ad idea. When I read that article about the wing, it really put a lot of my life into perspective, a lot of my recent mm. life, you know, the last mm. couple of years at that point. And then it became something that I couldn't not do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can't unsee it, you can't unfeel it. And I felt really compelled to act on it. Mm -hmm. So I really haven't thought about what I would do if I wasn't doing this or like what would happen when this is mission accomplished, whatever that looks like. Right, right. Um, you know. <laughs> I don't know that I have an answer. I mean, I have that's answers, okay. you know, like I would go on vacation, but like, you know, that's, if I think about like long-term, like, yes, I would like, right. you know, love to travel and love to do a little bit of a vacation and, you know, spend time with my niece and, yeah. you know, there's all it's sort of short-term things I would like to do. Like I'd like to, I, you know, let's see, maybe five or six years ago, I got to take my mom to Europe for her first time. Oh. And it was something that, you know, she was in her 60s. She had wanted to go to Europe her entire life. She and my father had always had plans, you know, like, we'll go when, when yep. we retire, when this happens. And then my yeah. father, unfortunately, he passed away before they were able to go. And so a few years after that, I was able to take her. And that was such wow. a gift. That's amazing. Um, so I feel like I have those kinds of thoughts, like with my niece, you know, I would like to be the one who shows her this yeah. or that. Yeah. Um, and I got to do one of those things this year, actually, um, right before, right a couple months ago. So in February, um, I love to snorkel. I love um, the underwater worlds and I can spend hours out there and my sister uh, and I have a birthday that's a week apart and she has a, um, it's not a habit. What's it called? A ritual? No. Oh, um, hmm. she does it every year. You know, tradition. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she has a tradition. She goes to Hawaii on her birthday and oftentimes when I can, I join her. So this year, her daughter, my niece, is five, and she's been in swim lessons for two years, and she just, like, got out of the wings and can swim on her own pretty, like, pretty reliably, obviously under supervision, of course, right. but, you know, she kind of got to the point where she's comfortable, feels safe in the water, and can get herself back up and, like, and can swim for a, a period of time on her own without the wings. So this was the year that I got to take her snorkeling. And so oh. we got her mask and we got her used to the mask. Yeah. And then we got to take her out and point at the fish and point at the turtles. And it was just such a beautiful memory to have and, and a lovely gift. Um, I mean, mostly for myself. I hope she remembers, but I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. But I feel that's, like that's something I would enjoy doing. Yeah, no, that's very special. Um, I too absolutely have a connection with the like the um, the ocean underwater. Um, I'm a certified scuba diver, and this year I took my husband for the first time to do it because 
anyone who's never snorkeled or scuba dived, there's just no way to explain this silent, beautiful world. And when you get to share someone with someone you love that experience, I think it's, it's such a memorable and special thing. So that's really cool that you guys got to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the next question I was going to ask is kind of on the same wavelength, but um, I mean, now that you're online, I mean, I guess it still is applicable, but if you could take your work or career anywhere in the world, where would it be? Oh, you know, um, I have, I mean, I have places on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. Um, The last time I was sort of like doing the dream vacation plan, I was looking at Sri Lanka. Oh, nice. Um, I had a place that I wanted to go to, but wasn't able to, if you recall in about 2010, um, there was what was called the Arab Spring. And so that was when a lot of dictatorships in um, Arab countries collapsed. Okay. At the time I was, I was in Italy and there is a ferry that runs from Italy to Tunisia. Oh, okay. And it was on my itinerary to take this ferry to visit Northern Africa, go to Tunisia. They have this beautiful, they have beautiful mosaics and tiles. And I had to cancel that trip because of Arab Spring. Right. And so I, I haven't gotten back. And I think that would be a place that I would like to go back to. Mm. Or go, go back and revisit that itinerary. Go yeah. The first time. Very, very interesting. Yeah, that, that sounds really, really cool. Um, I think more than ever, people are making their wish list of places to travel since we're so restricted. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's something that a lot of people will want to go back to those places and or want to, you know, do those trips that are on their bucket list. And hopefully we all just do it, do it and, you know, not wait any longer once this is lifted and, you know, we are able to do that. Um Okay, the next question I have for you is, what would you say is something that you are really, really passionate about and something that you wish you were more passionate about? Um, are we going to go beyond <laughs> women's rights? <laughs> I feel like that's it could be whatever of- you want, whatever <laughs> you feel called to talk about today. <laughs> um, I mean, gender equality is obviously very important to me. Yeah. Um, I'm going to look beyond that because I think that that's pretty, pretty apparent for everyone that this is, you know, my, my main um, passion and and cause that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. I'm also very passionate about our planet and um, I can be uh, pretty, pretty (laughs) difficult when it comes to recycling. Um, You know, I, I, I'm very, I'm passionate about getting, the right refuse into the right bin. Right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You know, we all have to do our part. And I think, you know, there's still lots of work that we can do in recycling and and it makes a huge difference for our planet. So um, I'm very, that's one that I am, that I'm passionate about. So, and something that I wish that I was more passionate about, um, oh, you know, (laughs) So is, this may sound odd. Um, I wish I was more passionate about being perfect. Okay. I like to get things done. I like to do things efficiently. I like to do things quickly, but I'm also a little bit of a bare minimum person, not like the absolute bare minimum, but like the bare minimum for what is like a go forward point. I'm always right. very strategically and I have, you know, like, this is what needs to happen to go forward. And this is what would need to happen to be perfect and like have ideal. And I am always happy, you know, entrepreneurs, we like, we move so quickly, we have to adapt. So I've gotten very used to like, okay, we've hit the go forward point. Let's go forward. Um, So maybe be a little bit more passionate to go back and and achieve some of the perfection after. Mm. after and, And, and yeah. I find that so interesting to hear. I mean, I hear a lot of people, you know, feeling like they're too much of a perfectionist. So it's really interesting to hear someone's perspective 
from what you're trying to say, but I truly believe that it's, it's working for you and you probably are way more efficient because you're not waiting for that perfection. And I think that there's many things that you could stall on because it's not ready. I mean, even this in, in incredible online pivot that you've done like there's many businesses that are still struggling because they don't, don't have that perfect formula yet of getting online but you just kind of did it and it's working and I mean if you feel like you need to go back and come over certain things to make it perfect that's one thing but I mean I think again you're I think you're just more efficient because you're like you know what it's just happening we're doing it let's go let's you know and so that's kind of a cool skill set to have. It, I mean, I think there's like, there's bonuses to both because I think it's sure. a beautiful work. And I think about like, oh, that took so much attention. That took so much effort. Like I can see how much love and care was put in it. And then I also will put things out and I'm like, okay, done. <laughs> and then a week later, you know, I get all the emails and I think you've probably, you've probably seen this, but I get all the emails and I'm like, just letting you know, this is <laughs> wrong or this is happens broken. to the best of us <laughs> <laughs> and then I go thank you so much and I send out another email that says hey everyone it was brought to my attention that this wasn't perfect here's the here's the edit <laughs> yeah I I feel I feel that on so many levels for sure I I get it for sure um but yeah no I think I think it's it's a very interesting thing and a perspective to have um would you say that you have or what would you say I guess from your business standpoint at this time, your secret sauce to success have, has been? I mean, having just gone through that conversation, it might be <laughs> that I'm willing to just take a go forward point versus a perfect point. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, a, there's something about survival um, and just, you know, looking at it, because there's, you know, this is still an ongoing situation. I do not know what the future of Havana looks like. Yeah. But I know yeah. what what I can put my energy into and what I can move forward. Yeah. And so just um, being able to differentiate that and say, you know, this, I don't know what I can do and I don't know how to move forward on that. Yep. But this thing, this is where I can put my attention and just focus fully on what I can control, what I can build, what I can um, work on. And then, do your best to plan for the rest or outsource if you can. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that's really, really good advice. Um, so I have two more questions for you. Hmm. The, the next one is, um, do you have a favorite quote or mantra that you like to use or that you try to remind yourself of? Hmm. <laughs> Um, you know, I've had so many quotes over the years, um, and I really love Jane Goodall. Um, maybe four years ago, I got to see her speak in person. Amazing. Um, and it was, you know, somebody that I had, I was an animals kid, you know, I think most kids are animals kids, but I was like <laughs> really into animals and, you know, so I had heard about Jane Goodall since I was a kid and heard that story. And she told her personal story about how she ended up where she was um, and how she had gone off into the jungle as a young woman, um, did not have, I think she said she had had her college degree, but didn't have her master's or she had a master's, but not a doctorate. And so she kind of through her resilience, ended up in the jungle the first time. And then through her mentor, her mentor said, okay, you know, you really need to have this degree, whichever one that was, so you should go back. So then she went back and she got her degree and then she came back. And so she went through the whole story. And one of the quotes that she has is, um, oh, I'm gonna butcher it, but basically it's each one of us matter, each one of our actions count, so every one of us has a part to play and it's important. Mm, mm -hmm. And I've totally butchered that, but that's, you know, the concept behind yeah. it. And that one feels, you know, the most, the, the most calling to me right now that. Absolutely. Yeah. We all have a part to play. 
Yeah, I think that is a really important thing to be reminded of at this point in time, because I do think there's a lot of people that don't know their purpose. They don't know what they're doing, what the direction should be. Um, so having that little reminder, I think is that's a really good one. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, the last question I have for you is, what is the best part about being a female? Oh, okay. Good question. So the, best, the best thing about being a female. Uh, the best part. I think the best part of being a female, and this might be a North American type thing, because I think it's a society thing, is that we're raised in a way that we're we're taught to be very resilient, but also we're taught to be very supportive. And I think we're given some freedoms to be soft mm -hmm. that men aren't. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. while we are very strong and we're resilient, we also are given the permission to be a bit soft and, and ask for help and, and receive support and also give a lot of support without having like in the way that we're men, I think are a little viewed a little bit differently. Definitely. And so I think as women, we're, we're given a lot of tools and, and that's the best part is that we're just so well-rounded. Yeah. I, I love that. And I do think it is very true, especially in the last, you know, decade or, or more where women are being allowed to do all of these things, to feel all of these things. Whereas with males, you know, they're, they're able to be and do all these things, but there's still certain things that they can't be, they can't hold themselves or they can't be accountable for those feelings or decisions or whatever that is. Whereas it does seem like we have this more open acceptance of that at the mm -hmm. moment for us, which, mm -hmm. yeah, I do think is a really amazing thing that we're able to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Okay, so before we finish, um, is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you feel called to speak about or to say? Um, I mean, I think we're all just doing our best and then we're doing that together. And I think that's a really wonderful, amazing thing. I know that it's really easy at this particular moment to kind of fall into a place where we look at like, what can I do? Yeah. And why is this all happening to me? Yeah. But if you can challenge yourself to say, what, what do I get to do? What do I get to try? Um, it's really a blank slate and, and trying to find the things that we can, that we can really take joy in. Yep. Um, yeah, that would be my, my call and challenge to everybody. Find what you can take joy in right now. Yeah, no, I like that. That's a really, really good way to kind of end things off. Um, where can we find you? online like where what resources um or what links etc mm -hmm. share with us so the website is www dot at her, or sorry of course <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me try that again so the website www hervannavancouver com yeah on facebook and instagram it's at Hervana Vancouver. Um, I'm on LinkedIn under Meredith Gerritsen. I don't think there's too many of me. I should be easy to find on LinkedIn, but then Hervana is also on LinkedIn and Hervana Coworking Collective. Perfect. And that's our digital footprint. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate the time. And um, again, I am loving everything that you're doing. Keep putting this community together and, and, you know, even just having that open platform right now is, is really helping a lot of people. So thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for having me on here. I'm glad we were able to finally schedule. Me too. 